So in this part of the section, we are going to be looking at the second part of the rack system where we are only going to be pulling the relevant chunks from the database, the vector database based on the user's prompt. So let's go through it step by step. So we already know that the book is vector embedded and is now present in this file right here. Right. So to start off, all that we are going to do is referencing our current file to the DB file. Okay. So we're taking the current directory and with that, we're piecing together the exact location of the chroma DB file. Okay. And then we're loading the vector store in this case, the chroma DB right here so that the database is available to use inside of this file. So, right. First, we need the database to be available to work with. Right. So that is what we're doing right here. We're telling it this persistent directory is where the database exists. And later, if you want to embed the user's question as well to search the database for the right chunks, we can use this embedder. And again, we're specifying the embedding model that we're going to be using. Now, this is something that a lot of people seem to get wrong, right? So whichever embedding model that we used to embed your private data, we have to use the same model to embed the user's question as well. Okay. You can't use different models or else it's not going to work. All right. So in this case, we're constantly always sticking to the text embedding three small model. Okay. Just remember that. Now the next step is to set up our retriever and then we are going to configure the retriever. All right. So if you remember from the diagram, the retriever is basically what collects the relevant chunks from the database based on the user's prompt. Right. So we can configure it by mentioning the type of the searching that we want to do. So in this case, I'm using the similarity score threshold searching type. But in the next few sections, we're going to be doing uh, different. Uh, we're going to be exploring different types of searching. Right. So and then we are going to be using the search KW args. OK, so what does this mean? We're specifying just how many highest relevant chunks that we want the retriever to bring. OK, so in this case, it is going to collect the top three chunks with the highest relevance scores. And right now we are saying the similarity score needs to be at least 0 0.5 or higher. OK, so this is a scale that goes from 0 to 1. So it is going to collect all of the chunks that have the similarity scores that is higher than 0 0.5 and it is going to shortlist the top three and then give it back to us. All right. So now we've set up our retriever, we've configured it. The next step is we have to query uh, the relevant chunks based on the user's question, right? So once again, I'm going to be using the magic keyword invoke right here. If you remember, this is the magic keyword that we're going to be using to take action in Langchain. So once we run this, it's going to give us the top three relevant chunks. So let's actually go ahead and run this file. We're uh, also going to be playing around with these parameters, see what happens. So remember all that we're doing is printing the relevant chunks right now. Okay. So if we run it, um, let's see, let's wait for a while. And great. We have a response. I right now expect three different docs or basically three different chunks that relate to the user's question. Right. So we know that the question is where does Gandalf meet Frodo? Right. So let's actually go look at the first chunk see if it actually contains the information required to answer that question. So you can see it says it was in the heart of Hobbiton at the home of Frodo Baggins that Gandalf came to speak of matters far greater than Frodo could have imagined. And this perfectly answers the question, right? How amazing is that? So Gandalf meets Frodo at the heart of Hobbiton in Frodo's home, right? So let's look at the second chunk. Here it says, Gandalf came to Hobbiton to visit Frodo one summer day. This answers the question as well, right? And finally, let us look at the last chunk. Frodo was in his home in Hobbiton when Gandalf arrived, his old friend and mentor. That's amazing, right? The exact passages that contains the answer have been retrieved. So now you can actually pull this code, change the parameters right here and then see what happens as well. So now we can say we need the top 10 chunks, let's say instead of three, and uh, we are lowering the upper limit as well. So it's going to bring in a lot more results as you can imagine, right? In the other hand, if we become a little too stringent, so let's say I'm only saying only collect the chunks that have a similarity score of 0 0.9, right? So let's see what happens and then run it again. Okay. So you can see that it says it cannot find any relevant docs because 
using this particular threshold of 0 0.9 right so if you're building your own rag applications you might be you know mistakenly be a little bit more stringent with your score and this is the lesson you can't really go too high or low you have to find the right uh, balance right and that brings us to the end of this section where we basically just dealt with one full book and then we implemented a rag search in the next section we'll actually see how we can add metadata to each of the chunk so what i mean by metadata is uh, basically being able to add you know uh, more information about where the chunk came from for example this particular chunk came from this book this chapter this passage etc so that in the future by retrieving it, we'll actually be able to see where the source of the chunk came from. You know, we'll also see why that is helpful in real-world applications as well. So I'll see you there.